Valheim is an amazing game and in this video I'm going to show you guys a few tips that are going to save you a ton of time, teach you how to dig for treasure, sail the world, and take over enemy bases along with a ton of other stuff. So uh, let's get into it everybody. Alright, so the best tip and the first tip I'm going to lead off with is that you can dig for buried treasure in Valheim using your pickaxe. So if you don't know, the pickaxe is basically going to dig out a huge chunk of ground. And what you can do is if you see this sort of rock formation, it's going to look a little bit like a ship. It's going to have two points sort of come out in the middle and then go to sort of a point at the end. So you're going to see something like this. You go to the points, go right about here, and you start digging down. What's going to happen is if you don't find a treasure chest when you dig down a few spaces, you just go to the other end of the formation, dig down again, and then you're going to find a treasure chest. I've done this with a few of these formations, and it always seems like the treasure chest is in the tip of these, what I'm calling, ships. So, um, yeah, you can find a ton of cool loot this way, and it's a really great way to get started and sort of go above and beyond as far as getting some good loot next up if you've got the resources you can craft a workbench next to any abandoned structure and take that structure over now another important thing to note here is that even though a workbench does cost 10 wood you can use the middle button on your mouse to destroy that workbench when you're done you know doing whatever you're going to do with this structure and you get all the resources back so if you're looking to get to some sort of a hard to get to area in a structure or you just want to take some resources off that structure drop a workbench start crafting start taking things apart start building however you want to do it and then when you're done you just uh, grab your workbench and you go so this is a great way to get a start especially if you're like early game and you want to use some stone walls or something like that you, this this is perfect and I've used this tip a ton it really does help you out immensely next up let's talk fires so if it's raining your fire is going to go out this is going to seem a bit obvious but some people i've seen asking questions about this just put something over your fire like a um a roof and now all of a sudden your fire is going to light up and you're good to go in the rain and while it comes to structures, when you're crafting or pretty much using anything, you always want to put it inside or sort of have a roof over it. For a workbench, this is how you're going to use a workbench. Also, while we're at it, if you need to upgrade your workbench, you can put down an anvil, anvil, anvil sorry about that, or a, I think it's a deer tanning rack. Both of those are going to upgrade your workbench. So that's how you're going to get your workbench to level three and get the ability to craft more stuff. Next up, if you've got a hoe, what you can do with that is use that to flatten ground. So this is a great way to sort of build the base on a flat area. You're also going to use it for gardening and stuff like that. But if you want to flatten the ground and build your base on a flat area, the hoe is definitely the way to go. Otherwise, you can use a pickaxe to do some crazy stuff too. But um, the, the hoe is definitely better. Also, when it comes to pickaxes and crazy stuff, if you're looking to create a river, water in this game does flow downhill. So you can use a pickaxe to sort of dig river into whatever area you want so that's sort of cool if you want to put your base somewhere near water or you want to get sort of a inlet for your ship to dock in use the pickaxe next up you can also use your hammer to create bridges bridges a lot of people i mean this, this should be obvious but a lot of people just don't think of this right off the bat but yeah what happens is if the, if i create something and i want to get over it if there's a gully i want to get over a lot of the time i'll just drop a workbench and create a bridge and it works much better than just running up and down the terrain now, next up, a lot of people have talked about this, so I'm going to go through this real quick. If you use these little, like, wood um, floors or wood panels, you can create or you can stack storage boxes. So, yeah, that's just a quick little tip there. Also, when it comes to quick little tips, you can sprint up pretty much any terrain. So if you're on a hill, you're having trouble getting up it, you can sprint. Just keep an eye on your stamina bar because that will, uh, once it runs out, you just start sliding downhill because you can't sprint anymore. Next up, when it comes to building again, another thing I like to do, I was talking about the inlets before and how I like to sort of create an inlet to park my ship in so it doesn't disappear. You can also create a dock. Again, you just put down your workbench and you use that flooring to go out a little bit. One thing to keep in mind is that rain does decay structures that are not covered by a roof in this game. So if you want anything long lasting, I'd recommend putting a roof over it. Also, while we're talking about this, there are tides in this game and the waters do get rougher when it's raining. So if you don't want your ship to disappear, sometimes it is best to like park it in an inlet, maybe put something behind it so it can't just float off. Off. Next up, when it comes to finding flint, the best way to do it is just running along the water side. You run around along the water water side, you're going to find a ton of flint, and that's sort of the best way to farm it. Some people early game don't know that. Now, in addition to farming flint, when it comes to farming trees, you can actually use trees to do damage to other trees. So this is a great way to take out trees that are a little bit too hard for you to cut down 
or to just get some extra bang for your buck. Now, when it comes to hunting deer, one thing that you're gonna wanna do is sneak up to them. You can sneak up to them and throw your spear using your middle mouse button, or you can sneak up to them, and if you're behind them and the wind is blowing you know, sort of against them, you can just completely sneak up to a deer and stab it. Those are some easy ways to get deer hide early game before you've got the bow. Now, when it comes to dungeon crawling, there is a safe space in these dungeons that you can go to and heal up. So this intro, this entryway, mobs or skeletons ghosts whatever it is they can't get up to it so you can jump on that heal up your stamina and then go back into attack if you're having trouble with a ghost or mob that does melee damage you can actually hide right in here and they're not going to be able to hit you also when it comes to skeletons if you there's a there's a real easy pattern to their attack so what you do is you wait for them to start on that back swing you back up you let them miss the swing then you can go in for an easy attack this is an amazing way to take them out without really too much trouble at all. When it comes to two or more skeletons, that's when I tend to go back to this sort of base um, safe zone, I guess, or this entry safe zone. And that always works out pretty much. When it comes to ships and sailing, you can actually push your ship. This, this is pretty obvious, but if you can stand in the water, you can push your ship. And now when it comes to sailing or anything like that, let's go into how this works. So the way this is gonna work is if you look in this upper sort of um, right-hand corner, you can see where the wind's blowing from and what status your ship is. So you see that paddle up above the circular sort of ship icon? That means that right now my ship is mobile via, via the rudder only. So you move the rudder back and forth, you can move your ship. That's just how it works. Once you drop your sail, that would be by pressing W. Now you're gonna, you're gonna have sort of a half mast icon. That means your ship is sailing at half mast, taking half advantage of the wind. And once you hit it again, you're gonna be sailing at full mast and that's how you're getting maximum speed with your ship. So you can see here, I just dropped the mast and you can see I dropped it again and the icon changes. Also, when it comes to the wind, if the wind is white, that means that the wind is actually powering your sails. So this little sort of um, dark icon right here in front of the ship, that's a dead zone. If your ship is pointed into that zone, Zone, you're getting no wind and you can't sail anywhere and the wind icon is going to turn gray if it is white that means the wind is sort of at your back or at your side at least and you, you can go forward basically the ship is going to be moving forward and everything's going to be good to go when it comes to that Another important thing to note with the ships is that as the tide and the weather changes, you're gonna be able to get more or less power out of your ship. So when it's storming, this is a perfect time to take advantage of the wind. You can sail in a, a, a crazy far distance in a storm because the wind is just so much more powerful. Do keep in mind that when there's a storm and things like that, tides are higher. So you've gotta make sure you don't like dock your ship too far inland because the tide can come out on you and now your ship's sort of dead in the water. Also, when you are sailing, if you go too far out, do keep in mind that you are gonna start running into some scary monsters or sea serpents or sea dragons, however you wanna call it. Um, so yeah, don't go too far out, especially in these little ships because these guys are just gonna tear your ships apart and it's gonna take you forever to get back because Honestly, these ships don't go that fast, and when I panic, I tend to uh, make mistakes. In this case, I turned into the wind. My ship is no longer going anywhere. I've got a sea snake, a sea serpent, or whatever you want to call it, a sea dragon, circling my ship, and I'm dead in the water. This was not a good scenario for me. The ship ended up breaking up, and my avatar, my character, died at sea because not only did I not have enough stamina to swim. By the way, you use stamina when you're swimming. If your stamina goes to zero, you're going to drown. I didn't not only have enough stamina, though, this thing was also attacking me, so I didn't even get to drown. I just got killed by the serpent, and that was the end of it. Anyways, those are some great tips, or some tips from me at least, about Valheim. If you guys have any questions, comments, anything like that, leave them down below. If you've got your own tips, leave them down below. If they're good, I'm going to pin them. And if you hit the sub, the like button, I'd appreciate it. But I'm not going to bug you too much, so until next time, peace.